All right, great. So thank you all for joining in today and good day to everybody out there. Uh, I am uh, Dave Maltz. I'm a technical fellow at Microsoft, but here I'm speaking to you not as a member of Microsoft, but as one of the many founders of Sonic. So what is Sonic? Sonic stands for the Software for Open Networking in the Cloud. It is a network operating system. It is the software that you would run on the switches and routers in your data center, in your edges, in your wide area network, in order to enable connectivity between all those servers. Sonic is interesting in many ways. One of the first things about it is that it's broken out into multiple layers. So for example, looking at that central box in the middle, Sonic is containerized. Each of the bits of software that runs on it is, can be put in its own container, which makes it very easy to update Sonic and for the people running a network based on Sonic to choose what features and capabilities they wanna put on the switches they have. Another unique thing about Sonic is that switch abstraction interface that shows down there at the bottom, or the SI. Sonic is built to run on a consistent SI interface, and many, many vendors across the industry have built SDKs so that many different switch ASICs can actually support Sonic. Today, there are over 100 switch platforms that run Sonic successfully and in production across the world, and that makes a broad ecosystem. Because it's such a broad ecosystem, many other players have come in to build management tools that run on top of Sonic, up at that management and configuration layer. What this means is that network engineers, network operators can start to treat those network switches the same way they do servers. They can use the same mechanisms for rolling out software, verifying the health of those switches, upgrading them. And that gives a lot of synergies between the software development houses, the network operation houses that wasn't there before, and allows a large set of tools to come in to make a healthy network ecosystem. Now, why did Microsoft involve with Sonic? So we started and founded Sonic because running a cloud scale is very, very hard. In particular, the network that ties all cloud scale services together faces many, many challenges. And to solve those challenges successfully, we found that we needed a couple of things. One, we needed to give the network architects, the network designers control over their own fate and destiny, that ability to choose what features are gonna be running on those switches, the time at which they're gonna upgrade. We needed to give the services operating these things the freedom to choose how to extend the software, the ability to put their own resources into generating and developing the new features that they might need to enhance their clouds and take that network to the next level. They needed agility. Again, they need to be able to control the tempo of updates and releases, when features would be built and put out there. They needed the ability to control what software is running on those switches. And ultimately, we needed collaboration. The thing about network operating systems is the more people who use them, the more people who contribute to them, the better they are for all of the participants. It's not something which should be unique to any one company or any one vertical. And so the Sonic ecosystem has been successful and has been growing very rapidly. On this slide shows you just some of the logos of the many teams and companies that have been collaborating together to build the Sonic ecosystem. Starting on the left with the many merchant silicon providers, companies building ASICs that can turn into switch platforms by the many names and companies here in the switch platform column, which have been adopted by large numbers of cloud scalers, enterprises, fintechs, universities, um, and network providers all across the industry, all across the globe. And then a large number of system and service providers who are offering service contracts, uh, visualization, uh, aid to design, capacity plan, layout, build, operate those networks, which are using Sonic as a network operating system underneath them. Sonic is actually getting the attention of a large number of people. Um, Gartner predicts that by 2025, 40% of medium and large size organizations are gonna be running Sonic in their production data centers. Interest in Sonic's increasing nearly 100% year over year. Um, leaders at IDC Research have suggested that Sonic has the potential to become the Linux of network operating systems. And that is our goal. There's been studies that show the Sonic operating system makes data centers more reliable. And the whole ecosystem and the market addressed by Sonic appears to be large and growing rapidly. And that then brings me to the next major announcement I'd like to make. To continue that rapid growth of Sonic, to help Sonic move out into new communities, new communities, new use cases, and work with more and larger developers, Sonic is joining the Linux Foundation as of today. 
To give you a little bit of the history, Sonic began working with the Open Compute project. Um, the work for the switch abstraction interface was done inside the OCP. And OCP has moved to a collaborative hardware software co-design strategy. And as part of that, work on those hardware abstraction layers will continue inside of the OCP project. Sonic is joining the Linux Foundation, again, to participate in the large amount of activity that's happening there, the large communities of developers and users who, act, who work there. And we see ourselves as remaining a bridge between the OCP work, where we'll continue to work on those hardware abstraction layers and new types of switches, and the Linux Foundation, where we'll be fully participating in this very large open source ecosystem. As we join the Linux Foundation, we have a governing board set up with seven luminary members and engineers from seven major companies that have been contributing to Sonic over the course of its development over time. As part of a Linux Foundation project, we'll also of course have technical committees made up of the individual contributors and corporate contributors who are technically active in submitting and contributing to that. There'll also be opportunities for participations for both individuals and companies and many different tiers of membership. But to give you a sense of how forward this is going, we've already got this critical mass and it's going fast. To give you a sense of that Sonic journey, Sonic began back in 2016, really targeted on those cloud scaler use cases. It's been powering our data centers and Microsoft since then, as well as many other cloud scalers. Over time though, the feature set supported by Sonic has been grown by the many uh, companies and individual contributors who are part of that to give us the ability to power bare metal scenarios, to power AI and gaming scenarios, to power enterprise scenarios. And we're now taking that forward into powering edge, carrier scenarios, telco, 5G, and other sorts of edge connectivity situations. Down at the bottom we have a, of this chart, you can see some of the many ASICs that we've been growing and supporting, as well as the feature sets that have been added over to Sonic. This means that Sonic is now ready to handle just about all the scenarios that people would want to do with a network switch. And again, as an active and vibrant ecosystem, if there is features or capabilities that aren't there currently, it's easy to participate with the community and get that scheduled into things that people are going to be wanting to develop. Now, moving forward again, we're joining the Linux Foundation, as I said, because there is so much activity happening here across so many spaces. As Sonic comes in, we see that there are a whole variety of layers inside the LF and many of the projects that we're looking forward to and excited to work with and partner with going forward into the future to deliver on the promise that is an open network operating system. And again, I'd like to end by reaching out for an open invitation for participation in this Sonic community. Um, individual contributors, corporate contributors are all welcome. There are many ways to get involved. And we're starting to use our new URL now down at the bottom, HTTP sonicfoundation.dev. So thank you and I look forward to your questions. Excellent. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, it has been outstanding. I remember, uh, you know, in my early days of kind of writing the size spec to, to now where the community has come. Uh, we have, uh, you know, again, for, for people who are on the call, if you have questions, uh, uh, please, please put them in the Q&A. Uh, I do have one quick, um, uh, one quick question. And I know people always ask, you know, ha has, has Microsoft deployed Sonic? And I know there were public articles from five years ago or whatever, but any insights that you can publicly share on, you know, the scale of deployments or some deployment examples that would be helpful to the people would be would be useful. Absolutely. So um, I can say that you know publicly, Microsoft has deployed Sonic on millions of ports. Um, you know, we talk about row level switches, rack level switches, all of those switches that we've been building out for quite a few years now are running Sonic. Our data center level and our regional level switches, we're doing pilots now running Sonic on those. You saw in our timeline how we're bringing Sonic to chassis and WAN class switches. Those things are going out into production now. Um, when we start summing up the public announcements of the various uh, enterprises and carriers that, and um, cloud scalers that have talked about deploying Sonic, there are millions and millions of ports of Sonic deployed across the industry, and that number is growing very rapidly. Nice, nice. No, that's a very exciting thing. And we are, uh, you know, we're going to look forward to the other communities collaborating and helping 
helping you um, and the community move forward. So very exciting. There are a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, what's the progress on Dash look like? Looking great. like, I should say. Yeah. Okay, great. So let me talk a little bit about what Dash is. Dash is now trying to use that sonic infrastructure to enable things like middle boxes or smart mix to take us um, to the next level of delivering features and capabilities across networks that are powered by sonic. Here's a very common situation. We want to do a software defined network. That means we want to take our physical network hardware, we want to virtualize it so that every tenant who's running over that shared infrastructure can see exactly the policies that they want. They can see their virtual machines or their hardware exposed with the security constraints, the reachability constraints, the quality of service constraints that they want to impose on that. Now, one way of doing that is to have switches or other middle boxes running Sonic expose these Dash APIs. The Dash API is not talking so much about the network level concepts, but those software defined networking concepts, the higher level abstractions of a virtual network that's for that particular tenant. And in that SDN abstraction then, that Dash abstraction, the control plane can say, I'd like to inject this virtual machine into this customer's virtual network with the following sets of policies. And then the Sonic uh, enabled switch underneath that will translate those policies into whatever the network layer configuration is required to make that happen. That could be putting pacers on, that could be applying access control lists. Um, but what this does is it allows us to bring a lot of new kinds of network hardware easily into that software defined network. Okay, excellent. Uh, there's uh, another question. How does Sonic fit into the broader LF ecosystem of platforms like Dent? You want me to take that? Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Uh, so that's actually a good question. And as we see the uh, network operating systems uh, evolution, uh, the starting of, of you know, Sonic was obviously uh, cloud scale data centers, enterprise data centers, sort of, sort of centralized deployments. And as, as they move out, Dent, on the other hand, starts at the very edge in terms of distributed campus location type devices. So the feature set is quite different uh, versus that. So that's kind of the complementary nature. Um, now, there are differences in technologies, right? You know, switch dev, SI, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and those are all dependent on kind of the use case applications and things like that. Um, the great news now is, you know, we have uh, an opportunity here at the Linux Foundation to have the community collaborate and, and figure out how we can look at the next decade, I would say, because, you know, 20 years ago, if you remember, you know, there were the server operating system choices, and I think Linux came in, and, and the good news with these uh, NOSes is it's all Linux-based. So, so we are starting from a very good position, but that's kind of the high level. Um, uh, uh, if I could add on to that, yeah, it's yeah. all about creating options and flexibility for service designers, network designers. Um, exactly. In the Sonic space, we've also done great work in collaboration uh, with Google and the PINs initiative. So again, that's another way of controlling networks that have Sonic in them. And so, um, you know, this is all about giving lots of freedom uh, so that people can control their own destiny and pick whatever is going to be the best application or software set to solve their problems. Exactly, exactly. Very good. I know we are right at the break here. Um, and they really appreciate your, uh, your um, keynote. But more importantly, uh, thank you for, for bringing Sonic to the Linux Foundation. And we are really, really excited to host it. Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Dave.